We've had riots. We've had coronavirus. We've had unemployment like we've never seen before. And we've had widespread despair. Yet the S&P 500 just closed the books on its best 50-session stretch ever. Does that make sense? Maybe it doesn't have to make sense anymore. The market enthusiasm is bordering on euphoria. The retail money has been pouring into the flavor of the day, and today we had a spike of FOMO, or fear of missing out, that you wouldn't believe. Sure, the numbers continue to be troubling, but with reopening of the economy, there is such a desire to return to normalcy that it doesn't seem to be satisfied in any other way. Let's be clear. This is a wholesale, generational, secular change that is far more significant than the coronavirus. Apparently, deficits don't matter. And the question has become, what is possible in the economy when government spending is unlimited? The reckoning will come in the form of currency debasement, but not today. The paradigm shift means huge deficits will become the new normal. This means that zero interest rates aren't going anywhere for the foreseeable future, and bonds will continue to be uninvestable for most investors. So we'll just throw more money at equities in search of a reasonable return. So either you believe in the bull case or get out of my way. This will likely end in tears, but not today. So what happened? Well... The May unemployment rate fell to 13.3% from 14.7%. It was supposed to have been 3 percentage points higher if households had answered their forms correctly. Well, maybe that common core math and a wonderful public education worked in our favor this time. In other words, it looks as though the economy is on the mend, and investors are betting on a faster recovery of the economy. But let's just hope this is not a picture of the V recovery. So let's go take a closer look. This chart here will help a bit for those looking for signs of a panic stampede into stocks among retail investors, and apparently institutional ones too, now that they have capitulated while sitting on the fence and are now rushing back into risk assets. Whether the stampede is due to expectations of more upside or just in the hope of catching some herd mentality while the NASDAQ composite hit a new record intraday high, the volume in the NASDAQ also hit an all-time high. And this chart should be titled FOMO, my friends. All right, now let's go take a look at our charts. And two quick charts today, beginning here with a 20-year monthly chart on the Spiders ESPY, and the close on Friday was 319.34. From that bottom there, we have stormed back to this point here, nearing an all-time high on the S&P 500. What I want to focus in on is the MAC. Now, a year ago about this time, we were looking at this. And now we find ourselves looking at this. We are well elevated above that zero. We're at about 10, 10.097 to be exact on the fast line, 10.99 for the slow line, which means we have a lot of strength still left in the market. Can you believe it? Well, we do. It's elevated here, and there's a possibility that we're going to head on through. The fast line is going to head on through that slow line and continue on up, given all the Fed intervention. So we have a strong market here. So don't be surprised if we continue to steam on. All right. Here you can see in the histogram, much the same. Things are looking pretty good there in the price rate of change. Nice basing pattern here over the multi-year period. That I like. Here into the relative strength, we bounced off at that point and headed straight up. We're not as weak as we were back in 2009 or even 2002. That's showing a little bit of strength as well. Moving down to stochastics, same thing. And you're going to see the same thing here with the Williams. Back on up to the price chart. One last look. Now let's go to the weekly chart. And now we're looking at the two-year weekly chart on the SPY. Once again, the bottom there stormed all the way up to that point there. That is a nice V recovery. 
into the MAC, you can see that now the weekly has definitely taken charge. From that bottom here, we ran all the way on up. Fast line moved through the slow line, heading up to that zero line as fast as it can. You see the same thing here in the histogram. And as well, the price rate of change, nice bottoming, except for this area here, but still nice basing. And we reflected from that uh, slow line, the fast line reflected and heading on up to the zero line, gaining strength. The relative strength already shows the strength here above 50. We're at a 66.43, moderately strong. We're heading on up toward that overbought territory. Stochastics looks good too. And then the Williams has already hit the overbought territory, telling you that the rest of the oscillators are likely to follow, which means the market looks like it's going to continue here. But as usual, I still am a little bit concerned about that VIX, even though it's tempered lately, but it's still above 20 and it can cause problems. However, it's becoming much more tame, so my concern's not as big as it was before. But always be on the watch out for something that can come around the corner that you're not expecting. And for today, that's Chew Dog Charts. Thank you.